Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is RAM as an ultra-fast hard drive with RAM disk. So I've been doing a lot of classes, and we've been talking a lot lately about hard drives. So normal hard drives, solid state drives, testing the speed of hard drives, because as I've been explaining to you folks, that nowadays the main bottleneck in computers is in fact the hard drive. A lot of you guys think it's a CPU, a lot of you guys think it's the memory. You know, if you get a bigger, better, faster CPU, if you get more memory, if you overclock, you have the idea that that will actually do something for your computer. And for most of you guys, that's not the case. For most of you guys, the real problem is the hard drive. The hard drive is the slowest component on your computer, and that's what's slowing everything else down. Now. So as we've talked about before, you can test the speed of your hard drive, see how fast it is, and you can try to upgrade it. So you, if you have a 5400 RPM hard drive, you could upgrade it to a Western Digital Raptor 10,000 RPM hard drive, or you could go with like a solid state drive. But as we've also discussed, the fastest memory on your computer, the fastest storage, is actually your RAM. So RAM is called a volatile memory. So whenever your CPU needs to interact with data, the information gets pulled into RAM off of the hard drive and then the CPU can interact with it when, once it's on the RAM. So RAM is the fastest uh, memory on your computer. It is literally over 10 times faster than even a solid state drive. The problem is though, it's called volatile memory. So when we talked about solid state drives, those are called non-volatile memory. What non-volatile memory means is you can put data onto that storage medium, and then if you pull the power, if you turn the power off, the data still stays there. The data is retained on that storage medium. The problem with RAM is it's what's called volatile memory. What that means is as soon as the power is no longer being put into the RAM, all of the data that's stored on the memory is gone. So if you turn the computer off, all the data in the memory goes away. If there's a power spike, or if you lose power, there's a gray out, all the memory goes away, or, yeah, all the uh, data on the memory goes away. If there's some problem with your motherboard, and again, power doesn't go to RAM, all the data in RAM goes away. So for a long time, the problem has been is that RAM is really, 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 really incredibly fast, and we want to use it as a place to store data, but it's just not a feasible thing to do. Well, what this company uh, has done that I'm going to show you with this program called RAM Disk is they allow you to actually use your RAM as if it is a hard drive, and then then when you are done, when you turn the computer out, off or you stop the service, the data that is stored within that virtual hard drive that you've created on the RAM gets copied and written to your hard drive on your computer. So this gives you a way to actually be able to save your data so that if the power goes out, you don't lose it. So you can either manually have the data that's copied in your RAM uh, disk down to your uh, your hard drive, or you can have it automatically set to every minute or every 30 seconds or every five minutes, how, however often you want it to happen. So what happens is that the, you create the drive within your RAM, then it's periodically saved to your hard drive. If there's any problems, RAM loses power, all the information be, may be wiped off the RAM, but then it can be reloaded from your hard drive and everything is A-OK. -okay. So, so that you understand what's going on with this, let's go over to the computer now so I can kind of show you this because this really, this is really, 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 really an awesome thing. So we're here at my Windows 7 computer. This is the lab computer that I always use. And I have opened up the uh, the web page for this RAM disk. So memory.dataram.com, products and services, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. So you see, this is the link right here. Now, as with most of these types of software, there are many different versions. So there's a personal use RAM disk that'll cost you about $19. There's a commercial use RAM disk that uh, they don't tell you uh, how much it costs. And then what's nice is that they have a freeware version. So you can download this right now and start using this, you know, five minutes after you get done watching this video. The big difference between the personal use, the $19 one and the free one, is the size of the RAM disk that you can create. So the freeware version only allows you to create up to four gig uh, hard drive, whereas the personal use one allows you to create a larger RAM disk. Why this is important is because now with, with many of the computers, even, even an average PC you might be able to buy at Best Buy, you might be able to put in 32 or 56 or some, some ridiculous amount of RAM into that PC. And so if you, if you actually purchase the $19 version, that means 
you could literally put you know 40 gigs of RAM into your computer and then use 30 of them as this RAM disk, this ultra fast uh, basic drive that uses your RAM. So basically, you know, you go here and you fi figure out whichever one you want to use. Um, if you download the freeware version, there was no crapware installed. It's very easy to install. Just next, 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 and you don't really have any problems. Once you've installed it, then all you do is you go to all programs, you go to the folder RAM disk, and then you go to the disk configuration and this will open this up. So this is the configuration panel you'll use in order to create your RAM disk. So you'll see that there's a basic settings here and then it will tell you the disk size. So I currently have my disk size set to a thousand megabytes. Uh, so basically one gig uh, storage. So I could set this all the way up to 4,092 megs, but I will just leave it at a thousand. Or you can make it a hundred or you may have 500 or you make it 2,500, whatever you wanna put here. Then it's going to ask you for what kind of partition, FAT16, FAT32, unformatted. Um, I would just say right at this point, leave it at FAT16, that's fine. It'll ask you if you wanna create a temporary directory, asks you if you wanna set a label for this disk. So when you're looking at it, does it, does it say like a label such as RAM disk? Then the boot sector, what kind of, of, of uh, formatting do you want here? Do you want Windows boot sector, DOS boot sector? Again, I would say just leave it as a Windows boot sector. Load save. So this is where you can have whatever is stored in that virtual hard drive actually copied down to your local hard drive in case there's a problem. So this is the image file. So you can say, I want this to go to C colon RAM disk dot IMG. And then we have the load options. Do I want to load the disk image at startup? So when this, this, uh, this service starts, am I going to load whatever has been stored here? Um, do I want to save disk image at shutdown? and do how often do I want to save? Again, this says like every uh, 300 seconds, which is about every five minutes. So basically, automatically every five minutes, it will save whatever is currently in that virtual hard drive in RAM down to your local C hard drive in case anything happens. Then if you go, there's event logs, and then there's more options here. Manually set RAM disk timeout, blah, 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 blah. And then down here, do you want RAM disk to start when Windows starts? So this, this the checkbox actually says, do not start uh, RAM disk when Windows starts. You have to decide what you wanna do. Then after that, all you do is you click on the RAM disk button and it's now creating that disk for you. And you can see that the autoplay already showed up. So if I close that, what we can do, so the service is started, I can go over here to computer and I can see I have this local disk See this 999 megabytes because they always steal a little bit from you. If I open this up, you can see I actually have a file in here, a picture, a movie file that I was dealing with before. And this is the virtual drive on my RAM. So basically, as you can see here, I have a C drive. So this is my solid state drive on this computer. I have the F drive. This is a data drive. This is a normal terabyte uh, platter drive. And then now this is that RAM disk. So this is the disk that has been created in RAM and is ultra, ultra, ultra fast. Now to show you how fast this RAM disk is compared. So I have C drive as a solid state. So I have that Intel solid state drive. I got a couple of months ago that I'm all just happy about, right? So that's a C drive and G is is this, this the, the, the RAM disk. So if we go here and I, what I've done is I've opened up Parkdale. So Parkdale, what this does is it allows me to test the speed of my hard drive. So this is just a utility to test the speed of the hard drive. What I can do is I can go to my C and I can test that. So right now it's testing and we can see I have a sequential write speed of 131 megabytes, random 45.7, sequential read of 250, random of 25.6. So this is pretty good for a solid state drive. Again, this is in Intel, prosumer, low enterprise class solid state drive. And this is really fast. This is this this makes my computer run a lot, a lot faster than the old platter drive that I had in it. So kind of look at those numbers. So 131 and 250. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go to uh, the, uh, the G drive. So the G drive, this is that RAM disk drive that we created. So 131 and 250, right? We click start here and now look at the speed. Uh, 1,666 megs per second, 
for write speed 3.3 gigs per second read. That is how much faster this, this RAM disk is compared to a solid state drive. That, that wasn't a platter drive we tested before. That was a solid state drive. Look at how that's just a lot. I can't do all the math there, but that is just an insane amount faster uh, than even a solid state drive. So that, that, again, that's really all there is to it. Basically, all you do is you, in, you install it from here, you go into these configurations, you decide how big you want to make it, uh, and then you can test it. And it really does work really, 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 really like amazingly well. I am so excited that I found this and now we just have to go and buy the license. Now why this is important is again for people like me, uh, I do a lot of high-end video encoding. So I, I deal with a lot of high definition video. So in order to encode high definition video, this really hammers the hell out of a hard drive. As, as, as I've said, I've been thinking about literally buying a $4,000 PCI Express solid state hard drive in order to be able to do my encoding faster. I think I'm going to spend 20 bucks on this and $200 in RAM and go that way instead. So for somebody like me, you know, I don't need a massive hard drive in order to do this video encoding, right? If I had a 20 gig incredibly fast hard drive, I could put all the raw files there, copy and paste them all together, and then hit the encode button, and that would be A-OK -okay for me. So I think that is what I am going to be doing because that's really great. Now the thing that you should be thinking about is again, this does use RAM. RAM can be a little quirky. RAM can be a little funky. So if you're going to be doing this in a production environment, if you're going to be using this in a production environment, make sure you test it. Make sure you test it very well to make sure there are no problems on your end. Again, with RAM, if it loses any power, if there's any quirks, you can have issues. If you decide to put this on something like a server and you don't test it first, you might, you might create massive, massive, massive problems for yourself. But if you test it and you play with it and it works well and you think it works as great as I do, it's an incredibly great tool. I mean, again, for, for 20 bucks, it's just, it's just a really cool thing. And again, the freeware version allows you to play with it for, for absolutely nothing. So this was the class RAM as an ultra fast hard drive with RAM disk. Um, again, I just this is like one of those things that's the greatest thing since sliced bread as far as I'm concerned. Uh, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. I enjoyed uh, doing this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.